Hey, good top of the morning to you, whosoever's. I hope, you, I hope you're having a great day, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe, guys. We're getting into the end times. We're, we're turning our, our little uh, room into uh, the Nebuchadnezzar from the, the book of uh, uh, was the, the, the Matrix, the movie. You know, <laughs> it's barely pieced together. But, guys, uh, today we're going to learn about in, how to interpret the Bible. The Bible is not the hardest thing in the world to understand, but you need to have the, the teacher, which is the Holy Spirit of God that teaches you all things. You know, the God's word illuminates our paths uh, in our daily walk. You know, we're, just be, we're able to distinguish between principalities and powers and dominions. That's why I know so Christmas is sun worship, Easter is, you know, pagan um, spring equinox. You know, it, it's basically everything's the orbit or the earth around the sun. So right now, as the Earth's orbit is to the farthest away from the sun and does a loop, you know, we have the, these fall festivals. Um, we give thanks to God for, you know, but, you know, you got to be careful. There are many gods, the Bible says. There's many small Gs in this world. And again, guys, one of the greatest things is how, how do we interpret the Bible? Well, interpretation has to do with the interpretation that I, that you and I give of, to the Word of God. This is the reason why our, there are Methodists, there are Baptists, there's Presbyterians, there's Catholics, there's Mormons. You know, the interpretation changes. But what's the best way to interpret the, the Bible? You know, what kind of uh, Bible teacher are you? We all have our interpretations. And where there's a disagreement, somebody is eventually wrong. So everybody can't be right. You know, I believe in the rapture of the church because the Bible says it's a blessed hope. I believe, uh, the, you know, the praying in tongues, you know, it's one of the gifts, not, all, you know, you know, there's a lot of things that I uh, believe in because I've, I've lived it, you know, experience, uh, you know, the overall purpose of the Bible uh, first must be considered that the reason why people teach the reason, the main reason is, is that to realize that, you know, we are born behind enemy lines that Satan is the God of this world. He wants to deceive you. We are born spiritually dead. We need to be born again. You know, these are basic foundations of being a human, you know, grandchildren of Adam and Eve. So, again, what is the purpose of, you know, you, one thing I've learned in my life is don't be dogmatic. You know, I could be right on 99, 99.9%, .9%, but I'm not always right. And I don't want to be right all the time. I try my best, uh, not because I have a good heart, it's because I have the Holy Spirit of God in me. Uh, wanting me to tell people that the, the judgment day is coming, that, uh, you know, Satan's one world empire. Last night I was having my devotion and I was reading about, or listening actually, through the Google Audio Bible of how, you know, S Satan's kingdom, he's going to come against three kings. So 10 kings are going to rise and he's going to go against three of them and he's going to win. And then, again, guys, the whole purpose of this is actually to usher in the end times. You know, uh, we can't be dogmatic. You know, I believe I was born again as a Catholic, so I don't believe you have to be a Christian to be saved. I believe you have to be born again to be saved. God did that for a reason. I was born and raised Catholic all my life. You know, did all the sacraments except the one getting married. Um, my first wife... She was Christian and I was Catholic. And so we picked in the middle. We got married in the Lutheran church. Again, guys, um, you know, the whole point of interpretation is how scripture is addressed. You know, context. You know, I, I, I like uh, Calvary Chapel uh, because they go verse by verse, chapter by chapter. They teach you the Bible. They teach you, again, that the best interpretation, the best commentary on the Bible is the Bible. You know. Another thing the Lord teaches us uh, through His Word is to trust Him and to obey. You know, when I read the verse of when Joshua uh, went across the Jordan River, he didn't, you know, he, he obeyed God. You know, there's tremendous le lessons in, 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 in walking with the Lord. Remember, and all, here's another thing, not all scriptures are for me. You know, some of the scriptures were made for the children of Israel in the Old Testament, you know. Um, I tell my brother Chewy all the time, he says, you know, he who endures to the end shall be saved. And I tell him that's, that's a promise guys. You know, that's not a, 
That's not a battle cry. That's a promise of God that uh, he's coming at the end of the seven-year tribulation, which I believe that Scripture is not even written to us. It's, it's written to the tribulation saints in the tribulation. So, again, guys, we have to learn. That, you know, I'm glad that the, there's not going to be two prophets in the last days. There are going to be two witnesses. You know, they're not, you know, they're not going to be 100%, but they're going to witness to what God has done in their life. And what God continues to do in their life. And, and there's many people on the broad road to destruction, guys. You know, sometimes we got to be really into the word of God. A little too much, I, I guess. You know, you might call, be called an idiot savant, you know. Um, but, you know, you can't change how God made you. And, you know, a little bit of uh, idiotic savant has helped me. Um, and many things, because I like to build, I like to put things together, I like to read, I like to understand, I like to, you know, contemplate, I like poetry, I like all these things. And this is, again, what Scripture does. Scripture is a little bit of poetry, um, a little bit of history, it's a little bit of um, how, you know, how we were founded, uh, and God made the heavens and the earth, you know, our Father who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name, so there's a Father in heaven looking down on us, and there's his son, Jesus Christ, who came and died on the cross and shed his blood for the remission of sins, now sits at the right hand of God the Father, looking down, waiting for everything, to the earth to become his footstool, you know, uh, uh, the footstool. You know, it is finished, you know. You put your feet up and it's done. Jesus is about to do that. Right now he's calling through the power of the Holy Spirit, he's causing, call, calling the church Unto himself, a bride, a, a bride, a, a, a sinless bride. You know, guys, I, I'm the bride of Christ, and I'm not sinless. I'll tell you firsthand, I am not sinless. But what I do try is, uh, you know, I try to do what I can with what I know, what God has taught me. You know, there's lessons in our, in our sanctification that we all go through. You know, remember, all scriptures are not for you, but all scriptures is for me. That is the good rule to keep in mind. Not everything, you know, is for you. But everything could be for me. Again, we have to keep the word of God in the immediate context. Scripture should be observed. Oh, what is the passage talking about? Who is it talking to? The the five who's, who, what, when, when, where, right? Uh, we deal with scripture uh, the same way, you know. Who wrote the book of First Thessalonians? It was written to the people in Thessalonica. You know, what was Paul trying to tell him? You know, when the Lord comes in the air. So the Lord is, you know, so all these scriptures, you know, uh, opens up our eyes to, to, to greater truths. You know, if you don't read Hebrew or Greek, then you read it, the American Standard Version. You're right close to what the Lord said. Frankly, says Pastor McGee, I cannot recommend the modern translations, although they are good things in them. I have found that because... They are so divided doctrinally. Every group that attempts to translate the Bible has naturally injects into their own translation their particular viewpoint. Therefore, if the liberal is going to be translating, you may be to have a little taste of liberalism. If the fundamentalists are going to be doing the translating, you'll get a bias in certain places. However, men who did the original English translations were men who believed that the Bible was the Word of God and handled it accordingly. When there were words they could not translate, they simply translated them, for instance, Abba and Paptizo. The danger in modern translations is that translations is done in a dogmatic fashion. The translator may take something out of one language and put it into another language in comparable terms, identical items if possible. Most of our modern translations are are basically modern speech. You know, how are we going to uh, understand the Bible unless you get into the Bible? You know, I personally like the King James Version. I like the New King James Version. I like the American Standard Version. Okay? Uh, doesn't mean that, I, you know, I read, I read whatever's in front of me. It's like food. You know, if I'm spiritually hungry, any translation will do because I need to get some spiritual food in me because I'm having a rough day. Or I'm going through this, or I'm going through that. So again, guys, another good reference that I've seen is the old school version of uh, the Schofield Bible, which is really good. And it has pretty good footnotes. You know, you have to uh, to interpret the Bible literally. You know, you got to believe what it says and, and and say what it means. You know, 
we can't just stand our own you know version of this or our own version of that guys you know the, the end times are gaining speed you know we, we need we need to begin our lives in how to pray you know the bible says in psalm 119 verse 18 says uh, open up thy eyes that i may behold wondrous things out of thy law you know the law of god is another word for the word you know we all have to begin with prayer, guys. We have to read our Bible. We need to study our Bible. We need to meditate on the Bible. You know, we got to read commentaries on the Bible, obey the Bible, pass it on to others. You know, guys, sometimes I don't understand the Bible and there's commentary and you read the commentary, you know, and, and that helps, again, concerning how to read the Bible. You know, how's your prayer life? You know, you want illumination in your life. You know, you you, you got to read the Bible, chew it, and then digest it, and then pray about it. You know, guys, there's great good things. Uh, uh, there's very, very, very old school teachings on how to mature in Christ. Again, you you have to know that the Bible, it is your head. Uh, stow it in your heart. Show it in your life. Sow it in the world. At any other way of saying things uh, that people may come to faith, and and you know you, what we're really doing, guys, is we're sharing our inheritance with our fellow humans. We're we're all related, you know, whether you have a darker pigmentation of black or lighter pigmentation of white, or brown or purple or yellow, whatever color you you know. I've well, you know God made God made many different shades. And it has a lot to do with where they, you know, where, where they grew up was better for their, you know, darker skin is better in the heat. You know, us white people, whiter people will have more cancers in Africa, I believe. So, again, guys, begin your morning with prayer. Do not, the Bible cannot be understood unless the Holy Spirit is your instructor. He wants to teach us. The fact of the matter is, our Lord told us He will guide you into all truth. John chapter 16, verse 13. When we open the Word of God, we need to begin with the psalmist prayers. Open up my eyes, Lord, to see the tremendous power of your law. Behold, Lord God. The psalmist wrote these lines. He had in mind the mosaic system, of course, but we widen that out of to include the 66 books of the Bible. Guys, we have more Bible than anybody else in human history has ever had. And we use it the least. You know, guys, you want to spend all eternity with the Lord? Can I give you an, can I give you an encouragement? Start with reading five minutes in His Word. You know, I want to be in heaven for, for, for the rest of life, or I want to be with the Lord, but you can't be ten minutes in His Word? Come on, guys. So again, guys, I got the missus calling me. May the Lord bless you. Be girded, be strengthened. The Lord is coming. Be of good cheer. The end times gain speed. In the nombre de Jesucristo. Amen.